Hi guys, welcome to Hope Rescue Podcast. I'm Kimberly and this is my husband, Timothy, looking like a spring snack. It is just a <laughs> spring snack. Okay. Yeah, you All look right. so good. Yeah. People can't see you who are listening online, but uh, you got this really nice, bright, candy-colored shirt on. Yes, That's chick. Yeah, you look like I, I want to buy you at the bakery. We need to get people to come over and buy me at the bakery. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. You know, I love my baked goods, Tim. (laughs) Anyway. I I got some jokes. I just got to keep moving. We just keep moving on. Hot cross buns and everything. But here we go. (laughs) Today's uh, topic is what kind of influencer are you? And uh, uh, if you were listening last week, we got to do something really cool. You heard a a special message we spoke uh, you primarily at Timberlake Church in Redmond, Washington. Shout out to Timberlake Church. Whoop, whoop. Exactly. They were awesome to us. Did all four of their services for the weekend. Yeah. Pastor it's Ben a great Sigmund. great church. Yeah, Pastor Ben Sigmund leads that church and uh, got to meet um, Carlos Ortiz, who is also the... Uh, he lead. took us to dinner. He was awesome. Was and great. their staff and their team were great, but um, I, we hope you enjoyed that message. But we're bad, back and glad to be here. We're bad and back. We're bad. We're <laughs> Back. We're back, and I'm a snack. <laughs> and you're a snack. Oh, babe, speaking of, high five. Speaking of snacks, <laughs> reminds me of yaks. Anyway, so we're getting more traction yes. on our podcast yes. about our yak. I know. we need to. Ha- he needs to have his own Instagram. Yeah, we're going to do that. The yak attack. But yeah, the yeah. yak. Can you, can you see the yak there? Yeah. So w- what's the big deal about the yak? Okay, the we horns. have one episode of horns coming out of my head. Yeah. Maybe we need to switch places. I know. Then I can look like Cruella Deville. No, yeah. what's that one lady? Uh, Under the Sea. It's a Disney. It's somebody. I don't know. You work here. that out. Get yeah. back to us. Okay? I will. Yeah. Somebody's gonna write in right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that I I like yes or no. Do you want the yak? We're not getting rid of the yak. Yeah. I even actually Sophie told us she wanted to get rid of the yak. You yeah. want to get rid of the yak? No, I just We're not want to rid of the move yak. The, the yak off the wall so it's no. not a distraction. The yak is glorious. You're comfortable with horns is what you're saying. I do it well. <laughs> so, okay. so here, as you mentioned, um, you know, we're going to talk about what kind of an influencer are you? And there's different areas of influence that we have. Um, we have our public influence. We have our family influence. We have our, you know, our, our, our Merrill influence and so forth. Social media influence. Social, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the public yeah. uh, aspect of that, you know. I mean, uh, but here's the problem with influence. Influence has to do, it's, it's a fragile mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So have you ever been around somebody that talks so much <laughs> That you just stop listening, and they no longer have influence. I know why you're I had this. I had this guy years ago that he talks so much. Literally, I, it, it, you know, I have to be careful. But uh, you know, he talked to me so long. I went to my car, uh-huh. and I, I starting to get in my car. He keeps talking. I open my car door. He keeps talking. Yeah. I close my door, but I made the mistake of rolling down my window. Oh. He keeps talking. <laughs> And then I start my car. Yes. He's still talking. Yes, yes. And then I, I'm, this is a true story. I put my car in reverse. And while I'm backing up, he's walking next to the car, keeps talking to me through the window. Oh my God. And as I move forward, and finally I go, dude, you are wasting my time. <laughs> I know it was unkind to say that, I but, know, but he, no, wouldn't he wasn't stop catching the social He's not clues. an influencer. That's no. all I'm saying. After well, a while, you stop to listening. Be, but you wouldn't listen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that's, that's what an influence. So w- w- when we talk about the fragile nature of influence, mm-hmm. uh, we like to call it influence capital. Right. So you build up a certain amount of capital when you love people and you love them well. Yes. They want to hear you. You know, you right. earn the right to speak into right, their right. life. But if you talk about things that are, you know, so controversial. Right but not important to you. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about how to balance your communication yeah. and have be a good influencer. If you want to be a good influencer on social media, if you want to be a good influencer in uh, leadership, say in church or, or in a company that you run uh, or in your marriage or your even family, in, with children. your children. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we talk about uh, influence capital a lot. We yes. talk about that a lot. Yeah. And really, what is influence right. capital? That's kind of we yeah, want to break that down. Yeah, it kind of comes down to I, I. My version of that would be how much influence credibility 
do you have? Everybody has a, is given a certain amount because right. we all have a circle of influence, right? So, but we have only so much. It will only go so far depending on uh, how we communicate. Yeah. And so you can waste your influence capital by choosing topics that will cause division, uh, you know, break down relationships, uh, in the passion of the moment, in anger. So you use, uh, you know, diminishing terms, all kinds of different things can make you yeah. lose your influence capital right. with those you love or people you work with or influence. Um, but it really comes down to, uh, you know, wanting, it, do you want to build credibility? And the truth is with your influence capital, if you abuse it, you do lose it. You yeah. don't have people standing around waiting to hear what you have to say if you have offended them unnecessarily. I, 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 you know, obviously we're on social media and I feel like for so many, we call them the trolls, you know, they get onto people's Instagrams and things and they're just haters. Haters gonna hate, you know? And haters they, gonna hate. Yeah, and, but they their whole mission is to destroy people who have influence, right. but that they feel and that's what they want to be known for and that's what they do but if you're someone who wants to be an influencer then your goal is to not that you have to water down your message or you know uh, tiptoe but not go out of your way to be offensive and to drive people away that's the goal um and so it's important if if you especially if you're a person of faith that you recognize that your influence capital needs to be directly related to your purpose and your mission which is to uh draw people to who Christ is through right. who you are. And so we have intentionally chosen through the years uh, to use our social media in a way we don't jump onto politics ever, even from the platform. You, that's not our mission. It's not our mission. We feel yeah. like our mission is to bring truth and then allow people who are adults to make their own adult decisions yeah. <laughs> on how they want to respond and react to that, in, however that plays out in social media for them. But for us, our goal was to not minimize our influence capital. And, and what you know and our listeners don't know yeah. um, is I am very political. And very and, strong, strongly uh, opinionated. Yes, I have. Yeah. A, couple of strong opinions yes. uh, every minute. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but I I as I um, process the news yeah. it's very important to me. Yeah. But that's my personal life. Right. And I don't talk to even my friends about that unless um, I know where they're at. Sure. So and the and the reason I do that is because my mission is to preach biblical truth. Mm -hmm. My mission is to tell people about Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. That mission is really what drives what I communicate. I don't want to waste my influence capital mm -hmm. on things that aren't my mission. Right. And so it's really important to me uh, to get that straight. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. This has been one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, you've quoted it many times. Ever, yeah. because I have... Per personally witnessed in my lifetime and all of us have the, the that power and James it talks about the tongue is a rudder and yeah. it can steer a ship it's a uh, it can, it's a it's a the, the tongue is a flame that can light you know the wilderness the trees burn it on fire mm. it can bring life to those you influence and and those you love or it can bring death and how quickly we all have been influenced by someone with a sharp tongue. Um, people in our families, you know, family members, uh, people we work with, you know, um, none of us do this perfectly. So give yourself permission at this moment as well as I, myself and my husband that we don't do that perfectly. But if you can recognize that there is power in the tongue and to speak words of life instead of condemning or attacking, saying, you know, this is something I'm obser I've observed this is how it impacts me. Um, you know, how do you feel about that? You know, there's yeah. just measured ways yeah. you can go about that. Yeah, but here, here's the thing. And, and I think we're both encouragers, but kind of by yeah. nature. Mm -hmm. And I always think we, we were visiting another church. We were at Timberlake, as you mentioned. And I'm going around, as I have for many years, I'm going around to the tech team, thanking them for serving. Because they're I awesome. Went back. Yeah, they are awesome. <laughs> I went back. We had the guy that was... Uh, setting up our table. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know what he's in charge of, but he was definitely in charge of our table yeah. uh, that we we're speaking at. So and kind. The first one yeah. was too short. 
and he made sure we had a tall enough table. I uh-huh. felt like I was speaking at a midget's table, but anyway, <laughs> uh, and, and he just, he was so accommodating. I, I thanked him probably four or five times yeah, yeah. and I went back anyway, all of that to say those, that's words of life to people. Right. For those of you who are leaders and maybe you have a company and your company has people that do kind of the, the grunt work, every company has them. Take a moment to go and influence their heart Mm -hmm. and encourage them, especially the higher up you are. Uh, It doesn't matter really how high, but if you are are a lead Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. some corporation Mm -hmm. and you tell someone who's at the lower ranks, Mm -hmm. that's a powerful thing to do. And I want to encourage you to do that. It increases your influence capital. You become a strong influencer and actually it makes people want to work more. They want to work harder. Yeah. So, and that's but, not even the ultimate goal. Yeah. It's just to, to speak words of life. Well, you know? for us driven people, it's the ultimate goal <laughs> to get people to work hard. But anyway, uh, the, I love it. The, the that last part of that uh, verse, it says, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Mm-hmm. And that idea of who loves the word, the tongue, the spoken mm-hmm. word mm-hmm. is, for example, you can hurt me Mm -hmm. because I love you more than other people. Mm -hmm. So because I love you, you can hurt me more than somebody that says, Hey, I don't like your hair. And I, you say it, it hurts. Yeah. So, and why do you say it all the time? Yeah, you do. I like it. So, but it's a, it's a really, the closer you are to somebody, the more influence you have. Uh And when you give words of death, it's really devastating. Yeah. When you give words of life, there is nothing more powerful than that. And by the way, you're really good at that. Oh, I think you are too. Look at us being each other's cheerleaders. Yeah. Come on now. (laughs) Um, so I I want to talk about this ugly word. Uh, especially Christians have a tendency to talk about this, this word compromise. Uh, I don't want to be a compromiser, you know? Okay. I understand you never want to compromise uh, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ or compromise scripture. You never want to water things down just so that you can influence people. You want to influence people with truth. Mm -hmm. But this passage in 1 Corinthians 9 Mm -hmm. is really a a really tough passage to ignore if you think you're never supposed to compromise. Mm -hmm. And, And I'll just read the first verse and then kind of summarize it. For though I am free from all... I have made myself a servant of all that I might win more of them. Mm -hmm. This overriding goal of Paul was to win people to Jesus Christ. And so even though he had freedom, he would act more like a servant. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though he had position and power and influence, he would humble himself. In, In verse 20, it talks about, Okay, I'm. Uh, I become a Jew to the Jew that I might influence the Jews mm-hmm. to come to Christ. Uh, in verse twenty one, I I became an outsider to the law, uh, even though in many ways I grew up in the law, so I might win the people that are separate from the law. And then I become weak to the weak. The weak in First Corinthians are people that are easily offended. Right. So they they're the ones that have a weak conscience. Mm-hmm. And so they're offended by, you know, they saw somebody, uh, their pastor walked into a restaurant and he ordered wine and they're like, what are you doing with that wine? That's not right. You're a pastor. And so they have a weak conscience about it. And I become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. Mm -hmm. I do all things for the sake of the gospel, Paul said, that I may share with them in its blessing. And that's first Corinthians nine. If those of you are going to study this out, I really encourage you because here's what he's saying. I'm willing for the sake of influence for my mission. My mission is to get people to know Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ came into this world, not to condemn us. He came to save us. He, he died on the cross forgiving us of our sins. And we receive eternal life through his resurrection. When you believe in Jesus Christ, he becomes your savior. Mm -hmm. What happens is now you have eternal life in Christ. So what better gift could you give to somebody? So, you know, if somebody's, uh, really up on the democratic side, ah, whatever, I'll listen to what you have to say. And somebody's up on the Republican side. Sure. I'll hear what you say. I'm pro Trump. I'm anti Trump. Okay. I really don't care. Yeah. You know, I do inside. I yeah. have my feelings about all of right. that. Yeah. But my goal, my mission is for people to see, right. 
Uh, and, and I want you to do this as well. Those of you who are followers of Christ, if you could just really focus on what's important mm -hmm. and that is your mission. Mm -hmm. If your mission is politics and relating, uh, uh, Christian things to Paul. Okay. I get it. But what Paul is saying is I become all things to all men that I mm -hmm. might win some. And it's really a powerful thing, powerful right. thing. Right. And here's the question that gets asked. Are you willing to concede the non-essential for the sake of the essential. Mm -hmm. And it's usually not asked that way. It's usually willing. Are you willing to compromise on these little things and right. so forth? Yeah. And, and so, we have to think about that. So why do you think some churches uh, embrace the culture of where they're at and um, and the way they minister versus other churches? Like, let's just say, for example, music style, dress style, whatever. <laughs> I just, I, I'm just thinking about, you know, back, uh, years ago, I was pastoring this church that had, we had, um, two, uh, contemporary services, we called it, you know, it had rock music and it was a casual environment. And then we had a traditional service, which was very, uh, you know, the hymns and the, the choir and you dressed up for that. Yeah. And really, whether the people dressed up, they expected me to dress up. Right. <laughs> so what I did was the first service was contemporary. The second service was traditional. Mm -hmm. Third service was contemporary. So I literally would come to church and have on a hanger my suit, tie, shirt, nice shoes. And then I would be dressed in T-shirt or mm -hmm. casual clothes jeans, mm -hmm. tennis shoes, whatever. And, uh, I would preach for a service. Then I would go into my office. Yes. I would, you remember this? Oh my gosh. And I it was would, like a storm when yeah. yeah. and I just yeah. in between service and then I would change, put yeah. the suit on. Then I'd come and preach in that, uh, traditional service. Then I'd go back to my office and change yeah. back in to jeans for the final service. Yeah. And the reason I was trying to become all things to all men that right. I might win some. Right. So I was really trying to accommodate honor the older right. people. Yeah. And, and yeah, it was a matter of honor. And, and I remember, uh, one lady said to me one time, you know, you are such a hypocrite uh -huh. that you change the clothes that you wear <laughs> to, uh, pretend like you're one thing to one group. And I said, this is a matter of love. I'm loving you people. Yeah. And she didn't really see the value of that, but uh, I, I love this statement uh, that that we wrote down. Yeah, uh, we think it was from Augustine. It's been debatable, though, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it's in essentials unity, in non essentials liberty, in all things clarity. Charity. Oh, charity. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the, or I don't love. have my glasses on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> clarity is important. <laughs> clarity is important that it's charity that I wear glasses. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, I always attribute that to Augustine. I guess that's been debunked a little bit, but yeah. it doesn't really matter where no, it comes the from. Point is well but but taken. but in studying that out a little bit, a real little research about where that came from, mm -hmm. some people say, well, you know, this is a opportunity to get away from uh, a debate. It's kind of get out a debate card free. Well, the reality is I'm not trying to get out of debate. Right. I love debate actually. Yeah. But um on the essential things, we should be united together. Who is Jesus Christ? Right. You know, the virgin birth of Christ. I'm pretty strong on that. You know, the deity of Jesus Christ that he is actually God incarnate. Pretty strong on that. That we should be united on yeah. as Christians. Right. The non-essentials are like, for example, how you worship. Right. Or we have a... Volume of worship. We have a really good friend, <laughs> probably one of the most creative... Uh, churches in America. Yeah. And it's a church by the Glades. Yes. And it's David Hughes uh -huh. and your good friend, Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. And I mean, I, I go to that and I'm going, oh, where amazing. does this guy get it? Right. You know, yeah. and, and really he's the driver of this. Yeah. He cracks me up. He's an awesome guy. And they are so impactful because they're using all these creative ways. We, we haven't, uh, you know, as I watch the stuff they put in there, in their worship service, some traditionalists would go, are you kidding me right, in church? Right. But it's so effective they're on taking winning the people city to Christ. For Jesus. Yeah. It's just, I mean, they're <laughs> Florida awesome. is being yeah. highly influenced. But you know what? They've also met their culture, you know, yeah. and that's, what's important. They're using the tools of the culture. Well, what you, didn't you tell me? In fact, I asked David this, I, they have a traditional service. They do. 
They have and, a tr- that, and that church would not be where they are today if it wasn't for the commitment they made to that traditional service yeah. and the love and the yeah. leadership. It's been a teamwork between yeah. the, uh, the, the, the older folks there that have been there who have anchored the church, yeah. who could see the vision, support it, get behind mm-hmm. it. And so I, it's very unique to be yeah. able to pull that off and yeah. to be, have two different cultures. But the point is they're not two. Yeah. They have the same purpose, but they allow there to be the diversity yeah. in how they approach the same message. We do. Service. And in fact, we do this, um, East Lake network yes. of churches. Uh-huh. We have one of those is, uh, in Torrey Pines mm-hmm. and we have a sanctuary service right. mm-hmm. and that I, I preach on that when yeah. we're not traveling and so yeah. forth. I, I preach there pretty regularly yes. uh-huh. and I love the, those are right. the sweetest people. Yeah, uh, they awesome. are amazing. <laughs> anyway, we're going to run out of time if we don't get yeah. to these, uh, <laughs> how do we make this practical in our life? The first one is this. When we talk about influence, and we're going to spend a few weeks on this because we want to talk about marriage, we want to talk about children, but just as a leader, how do we make this work? First thing I want to recommend to you, find your purpose. What is it that God is calling you to do? Mm-hmm. Are you an evangelist? Be an evangelist. Are you a Bible teacher? That's your driver? Be a Bible teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you, um, you know, we were just talking to one of our uh, co-workers and she was telling us, I have this heart for people in prison. Yeah. Then then do that. Let that be your driver. Right. But you don't go to prison in a suit or a dress in her case. Right. And I mean, you really, you relate to who right. you're. Right. And so uh, we, we have a, a really Im- good friend of ours who is incredibly influential. And I don't want her ruin his influence by using his name, but he's, he's a well-known man uh, across the country. Uh, and he is a guy that really speaks about scripture and politics Mm -hmm. and he deals with some really hot topics, but he also is an incredible historian. I probably could use his name, but I'm not going to, Mm. I think his mission is noble Yeah, and I, uh, I and he think does he's, it really well. He does it really yeah. well. He's probably one of the most articulate guys he we is, know. Yeah. But he's using his influence capital there. Mm-hmm. He is not going to be able to reach a lot of um, uh, people, and I don't think he's going to reach a lot of millennials. Yeah. But uh, he may. But he's he. That's the thing. Find your purpose. What's right. your driver? So what's right. the next thing? So the next thing is is to don't is not personalizing others when they disagree with you. And yeah. uh, that's that's tough to do <laughs> yeah, as is. an influencer it because really it ends yeah. up being this just this mass yeah. massive clash of wills. Yeah. And um, in in those situations, the it, it's so easy to take uh, somebody else's opinion of something right. and then take it as a direct attack, yeah. which is a mistake. The goal is to uh, be a great listener. I, I, what is it about personalizing people's yeah. Uh, you know, disagreement. I mean, yeah. I, I used to, to, I'd go, you don't agree with me on this point? Uh-huh. Like, what's wrong with you? But if you don't personalize that, it's a really right. powerful thing. Right, absolutely. So the third one is this, because we're running out of time. Don't let anything take you off of purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens so often as influence ad, influencers, leaders, parents, we get sidetracked mm-hmm. off of purpose. Know your purpose don't personalize mm-hmm. people's disagreements. Number three, don't get taken off of your purpose. And the fourth one is listen with a heart of love to others and respect their views. We yeah. can disagree and still love people well and respect them. Yeah. And uh, that that's where the depersonalization comes in. That's our that's the to me the the best takeaway is is listen well, love well, and respect others. And uh, don't. Don't get offended. Don't get yeah. tripped up. That gives you greater influence capital. Here's, here's, remember this. Every one of you that is listening to this podcast or watching this podcast is an influencer. Mm-hmm. Even if you live a relatively uh, separated life or mm-hmm. isolated life, mm-hmm. you're influencing someone. Mm-hmm. Every time you go to church, every time you go to work, every time you uh, log on social media, everything you say is influencing. Don't underestimate the importance of what you say and the influence you have. We want you to be 
really positive influencers. Make sure you know your purpose. Yeah. Make sure you don't react to people's disagreements. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you really stay on purpose. Make sure that you listen well and respect the views of others. It will increase your influence capital. Mm -hmm. You'll have a greater influence. So mm -hmm. we just want to thank you for uh, listening to our uh, podcast today. And we're going to next week, we're going to talk about influence capital as it relates to marriage. So how Ooh, are we doing on that? That's going to be good. Yeah. I don't know. We got some homework. Yeah, we got some homework <laughs> to do. So, you know, that is really key. There are things that you just need to let go and things you need to emphasize. So we'll talk about that. And then the final week and a couple podcasts down the road, we're going to talk about parents and how to influence your kids. We're so grateful that you uh, came to listen to us today. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next podcast. Bye, guys.